So, good morning and welcome to Expressive Photography. Today we're going to be exploring atmosphere and what it brings to our photography. So one of the great things about living on the west coast of Scotland is the weather is so diverse. I mean, we get so many storms and wind and rain and snow and sleet and uh, torrential rain. It's just horrendous diversity of weather. But we've woken up this morning and after yesterday's downpour, we've woken up to this perfect blue sky day. It's, it, there, there's a few clouds, but they're very wispy. But what we've come is, we've come to a loch that's uh, just maybe five or six miles from our house and there's a temperature inversion. So we're clear all around us, but down in the glen there, there's all of this incredible fog and all of the forest is just sticking up uh, through this uh, mist and fog and it's creating an incredibly atmospheric situation. So what I've got here, I've got my old faithful Nikon 80-400 on my Nikon D850 on my Arca Swiss uh, C1 Cube on my Gitzo sticks and I'm using my long lens again to zoom right in uh, to create layers and juxtapositions and visual relationships and this stuff just knocks my socks off. I absolutely love it. The enthusiasm I have for this place, the energy with the light and the luminosity and the contrast and all of these different layers. We've had the drone up and flying over this stuff and it's just incredible. Just this playground of luminosity and contrast. So this is the advantage of having big sticks. Uh, I'm only uh, 175 centimetres tall, but this tripod goes to something significantly more. I think it's, I mean, it's not fully extended, so it's, it's kind of a couple of metres uh, plus. There's some foreground bushes uh, with some little twigs sticking up, and um, where I was before, they were starting to be there out of focus. It's having this sort of spatial awareness when we're in the field. If I hadn't noticed that when I get home, look at them on the computer, the first thing you notice is the out of focus twigs and then you've got a clone and, and it's just a hassle. Um, so let's try and get things right in the field as much as possible. So with the big sticks, um, I'm able to extend my height well above those foreground twigs. Uh, so thank you, get so, uh, uh, I can't remember what model this one is. It is a GT3543XLS. Uh, so it's the cost of a house, but it's worth it. One thing I was talking about in this week's members video was how little people care about the experiences that we have when we're out in the field, the equipment that we use, how much time we spend processing, or the complexity of the techniques that we use. And I spoke for 20 minutes on, on basically how little people really care about that stuff because all they care about is the photograph. And photographs are not experiences. And for us, we are unique in that we experienced the place, we felt the split the place, we had an amazing time, we we just we have memories of that place. And photographs are not memories, photographs are not experiences. They they fall very far short of that. 
So when it comes to making photographs, we have to think about articulating emotions, experiences to a certain extent. We've got to try and feel something of that event. This uh, first one, you can see there's a lot of out of focus stuff here on the left hand side. And this is handheld. This is literally, I just jumped out of the car and pointed my camera because I just loved the fog on here. And I took two, two exposures, one uh, focused on the side there and another one focused at the back, just handheld, knowing that Photoshop is capable of focus stacking these without any major trouble. The, the color that the camera's picking up here doesn't really represent what I was experiencing at all. Uh, it's a, quite a warm uh, shot. So what I did was I basically took these into Photoshop uh, aligned them as you normally would and just did the normal uh, auto blend and it did a pretty good job and I was able to bring out uh, this photograph. I've cropped all of today's three photographs into the 16 by 7 aspect ratio which is panoramic film and I was very inspired when I was a young man uh, by the photography of uh, Scotland's Colin Pryor uh, who used to wander all over the Scottish Highlands with his 16-7 camera making these incredible Velvia portraits, uh, panoramic shots of the Scottish countryside. Um, and they really inspired me to, to love my country to a certain extent because it just showed the majesty. The 16x7 panoramic format is excellent at conveying a sense of space, expansiveness, grandeur. And... I felt that these photographs needed that to help articulate some of the experience that I had. This big wide angled view from an elevated position looking down over a glen. And you've got a, a, an eagle eyes perspective, I guess, on the world. Uh, what I wanted to demonstrate in this photograph is the main point of today's video is talking about atmosphere and feel and how quickly we can change atmosphere and feel with our photographs. The white slider in particular takes the energy out of the system. As soon as we make the fog less luminous, it feels less vibrant. It feels a bit more subdued. And the opposite is true. If not up to the point of clipping, we get to the point where you add luminosity to it and it comes to life. Light is the giver of life uh, on this planet and it is the giver of life in photography. The luminous areas are going to fill us with joy. The shadowy, darker areas are going to give us somewhere to be scared or more and more fearful of life. This area up in the top here, I feel could do with being tonally different, but I can't change this globally. You can see with a bit of coolness in there, it actually looks kind of good. So if I, and the fog I think generally looks good, but I'm obviously losing this part due to clipping because uh, a lot of the information is in the blue channel and once we take it out, it's causing this clipping. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to very, very quickly come in with a brush and I can either warm that again which will help to get rid of some of the clipping, but I don't particularly want to do that. So what I'll do is I'll just take the whites out. And you can see there, as soon as I just take a little bit of the whites out of that side, it's got rid of that clipping again. I'll try and add a bit of brightness back in. And I might have to cool it a tiny fraction just to make it look consistent with the rest of the frame. So I kind of uh, I kind of like shots like this. I think they're I'll just move that so it's centered. I kind of like shots like this. I think they represent the kind of expansiveness that I was looking to try and create. Simple, very down to earth. Uh, I like the juxtaposition of the of the tree on the left hand side. I think it adds a very dynamic element to the shot. But moving on, 
this is the raw file of the next one. As you can see, once you're shooting down into fog like this, it can get quite subdued. And if I was to repeat some of the points that I was making in the last image here, this is quite a subdued feeling photograph. It feels quite, um, yeah, kind of melancholy. And again, given that this is called the Expressive Photography uh, YouTube channel, I'd like to think that we can be expressive and being expressive relies upon us having feelings and emotions and then being able to articulate them. So if I repeat that step and just add some luminosity to that fog, some of that melancholy disappears and it feels brighter, more uplifting. It's almost like the sun's coming up, the fog's going to dissipate, it's going to be a lovely day. Whereas without that fog adjustment, uh, the brightness adjustment, the luminosity adjustment, we kind of lose a bit of that joy. The second thing that's going to have a very profound effect on this shot is a touch of clarity. And it's very important with processing for us to know when to stop. Because if we just ruthlessly increase clarity and texture, the image is going to tell us very, very quickly, please stop doing that. Yeah. So, but we can add a bit. And it's just a case again of just eyeballing. And what it does, it's almost you're exaggerating or accentuating the textures and the and the details in those trees and it makes them just a bit more accessible in the fog there things get very diffused and very low contrast and what we're doing is we're just giving it a helping hand now and just saying okay they're in there in the fog but we want to see them a little bit they're still trees and the next thing i'm going to do here is just to highlight how the histogram tells us where all the luminosity is there's nothing in this frame that's darker than a midtone. So if I hover over this area here and you keep your eyes on the histogram over on the right hand side, you can see it's over this spike. So this spike is this area and then we move slowly up until we get to this area, which is the spike on the right hand side. So this is our brightest area of the frame. If I want to add a bit of contrast, I can just hold the pointer over that spike, which, you know, it's pretty accurately over there, bring down that foreground, and that's going to create some more depth. And by creating depth, we create more, um, this sort of feeling of layers, so it's a bit more layered. I could possibly open my shadows a touch and this area on the right hand side, I might have a wee explore there and see if I can take away a touch of that cool tone to it. I don't want to lift the shadows too much. I can't really do that. Maybe open the whites a fraction, open the highlights, anything to basically lift that. I'd like to think that what this demonstrates is how quickly we can change the mood and the feel of any photograph in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw without having to go into Photoshop. I've just spent the last month or so recording a new processing video series called a Dodge and Burning Masterclass, the Expressive Photography Dodge and Burn Masterclass, which is going to be coming out next week. And in that, I've spent a huge amount of time focusing on not just the techniques of dodging and burning, but the why of dodging and burning. So it's the how, we need to know the how, otherwise we're just shooting in the dark, but we also have to understand why and the impact of what it is we're gonna do. And I think it's really important for us to spend time perfecting these skills in an environment like Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw before we embark on a Photoshop processing where things just suddenly get an awful lot more complicated. Then this final photograph here, uh, I loved the way the fog was just hanging over the hillside there with it receding into the trees. And, and I, this is possibly my favorite of the three. The 
I want to explore where this luminosity is because this luminosity is going to tell the story. This is the atmosphere bit of this photograph. And it's a good idea to sometimes just explore and have a look around and likewise have a look at the back to see what happens when we lift, when we open it up and find an exposure that kind of sits in the middle ground perhaps. It's easier to add light than to take it away. So maybe setting the exposure for the back there. I'm gonna keep that a little bit darker, I think. And now pretty much the rest of this photograph I'm going to process using gradients. Uh, I was happy with this crop. There's just enough, there's just a bunch of fog underneath. There's no more fog and there's just bare hillside above. So I'm, I'm cropping out nothing significant. I am going to look again at the overall temperature. I think I like the back a little bit cooler. There's a little bit of a strange color cast in that top left hand corner there. There's also a sensor spot there that really is begging to be removed. I don't tend to remove spots in Lightroom as part of my own workflow. I, I always do that in Photoshop. I think this tool can be a bit crude, but I'm staying in Lightroom for this, this exercise. I'm going to drag up a gradient from the bottom and I'm going to accentuate the fog a little bit. You know, it's foggy. I'm making it more foggy. I'm not adding fog. I'm just fogging a little. And I want to compare the temperature of warm fog and cool fog. I think the cooler works and there's a bit of a, a different feel in the, that center band there. So I think I might use a brush there to increase texture and clarity through that middle area because I think that's a very important part of this frame. The fog is like the base that we're going to kind of skim over the top of and then we're into that, uh, the texture of where the moraines have been and where the glacier has gone through and created this very uh, topographical uh, uh, landscape. And then we move through into the trees in the background. Now, as I look at those trees, I think, well, there's probably, we can add a bit of life to that too. So I'm going to go quite, you know, into the, add a bit of clarity and um, texture. And this is a perfect example of each individual image has to be dealt with as an individual because normally you would put more clarity and texture in a foreground and have more atmosphere in the background. But in this case, I'm wanting to actually increase the power of the background. I want it to be more noticeable. There's not a lot in this frame and I think it's a, it's a photograph that needs engagement or it needs something to make it engaging. So I'm going to just work on ways to increase that engagement in the back there. I kind of like that. I think that looks pretty cool. And finally, with a brush, there's that, I think it's just the sun was off to the left hand side here. There's just a little touch of like magenta in that corner. So I'm just going to grab the green tint. And you know when you've gone too far with green in the landscape, you cool it a touch further. And that's just going to drop out that magenta that was in that far left hand corner there. I think it's important when we process images to be able to get to a point quite quickly where they have the feel, crop ratio, luminosity, contrast, color space, all, you know, that basic kind of portfolio or palette of emotional impact. And we should be able to do that quite quickly in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. Because if we can't do that, and I say this in the processing videos, we shouldn't be moving into Photoshop 
because it's not going to help. We have to understand how the thing is going to feel. Uh, going into Photoshop just makes things harder in many ways. It doesn't help uh, if we don't have a roadmap, if we don't have a plan of how we want this thing to feel. So I think it's really important to develop our skills with the tools, but not to lose sight of the main objective, which is to make photographs that are expressive and articulate in their own. No one cares how complicated the processing is. If I post this image and people like it, it doesn't matter if I spent an hour in Photoshop using Tony Kuiper's luminosity masks, or I can do it in five minutes in Lightroom. I don't think it matters any more than it matters when we listen to music, how expensive the instruments were that were being played. Uh, I hope you enjoy this type of stuff. Um, let me know in the comments if it's working for you or not. And um, a couple of other little announcements before we close today. If you didn't notice on Wednesday, I posted the first part of my Vision and Light interview with uh, Rachel Talabart. We had a fabulous conversation. It was the first time Rachel and I had actually spoken, although we've had quite a bit of correspondence over the years. But uh, it was the first time we've actually spoken more face to face on Zoom. But it was another one of those really spontaneously brilliant conversations that I had so much fun and Rachel seemed to enjoy herself as well. Second part will be this coming Wednesday. So that's this this March, uh, March's edition of Vision and Light was last Wednesday and this coming Wednesday. Uh, if you want to dig deeper with expressive photography, check out the members channel. Uh, for a monthly subscription, you can join the expressive photographers and every week I'm posting videos on there with more insights, more depth and more um, processing and stuff like that. So hopefully you might get some value with that. New video series coming out next week also, the Expressive Photography Dodge and Burn uh, Masterclass, which I'm very proud of. And I think it offers some really amazing value. I think with all the bonus material, it's over seven hours. So it's, it's quite a huge course. Uh, so hopefully some of you will enjoy that also. Uh, that's it for this week. See you again next week. Uh, for some more West of Scotland uh, landscapes and expressive photography and that type of thing. Thank you very much for watching. As always, take care of yourselves wherever you are. Stay safe and I hope everyone is surviving the pandemic. All the best now. Bye-bye. <laughs>